You're joking, aren't you? It's the Teesside Chef. A big bunch of strawberries, if that's the collective noun for strawberries. Mix it all up, pour it in, set it and forget it, and you have a simple, quick strawberry cheesecake. One whole kilo of strawberries to start with, and I'm using frozen strawberries here because they're cheap, aren't they? Relatively. And I'm only going to beat them up anyway, and once blended up, I'll remove the seeds, and that will leave me with about 850 to 900 grams of strawberry pulp, which I'll add 100 grams of sugar to before heating up. And I'm heating up because I'm adding gelatin to the fruit pulp. Sheet gelatin in this case, because it doesn't smell like pigs when heated. And I need to add 12 sheets of sheet gelatin, and that's around 20 grams, and I'm making sure that it's mixed in really, really well with a whisk at this point. And once done, I'm going to let it cool down, but not in the fridge, because I'm not making wobbly, wobbly jelly at this point. And now that's cooling, I can get on with a base, starting with 300 grams of shortbread biscuits. There is a link for these in the description, but any butter biscuits work well, really. And I've blended them up into a sort of breadcrumb texture, but you can just put them in a bag and give them a good thrashing if you like. I added 100 grams of melted butter and blended again until I had the texture of wet sand. And now I'm going to line a standard 28 to 30 centimetre cake tin with some baking paper. And this cheesecake can be tricky to remove from the cake tin when set. So I always leave a little lip of paper that will eventually stick out and leave me access to my cheesecake. And of course, we have to lubricate everything with butter all the time. Well, not everything. I mean, there are specialist lubricating creams and whatnot for other purposes. But butter is best in this case. And you're using butter to help stick the paper down, but you're also buttering the top to prevent the cheesecake base from sticking. And how butter performs both a sticking and an unsticking task is alchemy to me, and I just can't get my head around it. Anyway, you want to flatten down that biscuit butter mix in your tin firmly with a spoon, and if you're extra professional, an offset spatula will do a smashing job also. And I like to go around and check the thickness with a toothpick to make sure everything is even. But if you do this, don't forget to fill in those holes, will you? Give this base the perfect crisp by baking it at the bottom of the oven, 140 degrees Celsius, fan setting, 25 minutes. We need to let that cool now and get on with the easy filling. Melt 300 grams of white chocolate in the microwave or in a bowl over a pan of hot water or wherever. While that's cooling, beat up 450 grams of cream cheese. And there is one brand that you need to use for the best results, but I'm not advertising it for free. Whisk up 300 milliliters of double cream to sort of stiffish peaks, but don't go too far before adding a third of the whipped cream to the unnamed cheese brand, and doing this first will loosen the unnamed cheese brand, making it easier to fold in the rest of the cream. And I'm doing the folding using J turns, which I am demonstrating here. Looks like the letter J, obviously, that's where it gets the name from. All right, all right, so before I add the melted chocolate and now the biscuit base is cooled, let's cut some fresh strawberries in half and line the cake pan with them with the inside of the cut strawberry facing out like this. And this little step is going to give us a lovely line of strawberries on the outside of our finished cheesecake. It's going to make it look absolutely ruddy gorgeous. And that's swearing. So now that that's done, we can add the melted chocolate. And we couldn't have done that before we adorned our cake pan with strawberries because the whole thing would have set too much and we wouldn't have been able to just pour it in the pan with consummate ease, which is what we're going to do soon. But let's not get ahead of ourselves there. Eh? because we have to add the final addition to the cheesecake filling, which is our now cool to room temperature jelly mix. And I did sieve it again just to make sure there were no gelatin lumps in there, but you don't have to do this. I'm just a little bit OCD about these things, and I've poured around 250 grams of that in my cheesy, creamy, chocolatey mix, and I'll combine that well before adding another 250 grams worth, and you should have a uniform colour when it's all mixed in. A nice light pink colour that's about the colour of my bare bottom, if you know what the colour of my bare bottom looks like. Easy reference for you there. Then you just need to go ahead and pour the mix in the pan, and that is just so lovely going in there. I'm just going to shut up for a minute and enjoy how oddly satisfying that is. Okay, there might be a few air bubbles in there, so I'm just going to knock them out by tapping the cheesecake gently on the surface before placing in the fridge for a few hours to set, set it and forget it. When set, pour on the remainder of the strawberry jelly that's been kept at room temperature, remember, so it hasn't set into wobbly, wobbly jelly. I love saying wobbly, wobbly jelly. Wobbly, wobbly jelly. You know, the Victorians used to use wobbly, wobbly jelly as entertainment. They'd put it on the table and then jostle the table to make it shake and 
They thought that was the height of jocularity. Anywho, let's give it a tap to get rid of any more air bubbles that are in there. And if you want to be extra vigilant, pop any stragglers with a toothpick. And you can see how smooth that top is there. It's glistening. A couple more hours in the fridge and you are done. Release the tin carefully and you can use a metal knife to do this because you don't want to use enough pressure to scratch the pan anyway. Be gentle. Take the tin off. And that lip of baking paper I mentioned earlier will allow us to access the bottom of the cheesecake for easy-ish lifting. And there it is, topped with more fresh strawberries, smooth, light, and packed with strawberry goodness. No baked strawberry cheesecake, perfect for the seven-second period when strawberries are in season. Enjoy it, won't you? Terra.